Hi again, welcome back. So we finished fixed base method. Now let's move on to the variable slope method. Okay. So the variable slope method assumes again, um, we will assume that the direct runoff starts at point A and the, the variable slope method assumes that the direct runoff will stop at the inflection point so which is at t equal to 8 hours so this is that line so this is our inflection point okay so that's our inflection point so this method the first part is similar to what we did for fixed base so we will extend the prevent slope until we hit the time to peak okay and then we will extend or extrapolate the post event flow until we hit the inflection point timestamp so i'm just going to extend this back here like this okay so this is our point a this i'm going to call as point b and then what we need to do is we need to let me call this as point c this is where we hit the time to peak by extending the pre-event flow and then you connect c and b okay so this is how the base flow line looks using the variable slope method so to do this again we have to find the slope of ac cb and let me also call this as d that point as d so we need to get the slope of ac slope of cb and slope of bd slope of ac and bd is easy so slope we already did this ac is 10 cfs per hour slope of bd so that's de decreasing by 5 cfs per hour so this is 5 cfs per hour and then for cb so if we do that so this is going backward it is increasing at the rate of 5 cfs per hour so this will be 110 this will be 115 this will be 120 so the base flow at point b is 120 cfs the base flow at point c is we did this before so 140 this is 130 120 110 and this time this is in between C and B so all I can do here is if you want you can find the slope of that but here I'm just going to take an average so at t equal to 7 hours so base flow t7 this is going to be the average of base flow at B and C so at C it is 110 CFS and at B it is 120 CFS so if you take the arithmetic average it will be 115 CFS okay so once we have done all that I think I gave you all the numbers that you need for this table so at, at t equal to 3 hours it's 140 so this is 0 so at 11 it is 105 so the direct runoff is 0 at t equal to 9 hours so at 9 hours we go back in this direction so we have 115 at t equal to 7 let me see so that yeah so at t equal to 9 we have 115 so at t equal to 7 again we have 115 at t equal to 8 it is 120 but i'm not asking you to report that in this table so at t equal to 5 hours we had 120 
so you can get these numbers for direct runoff by subtracting the base flow from the total flow I will just do this for B t equal to 7 and you can do it for t equal to 5 and 9 so at t equal to 7 we have total flow of 350 so 350 minus 115 so this will be 235 CFS and you can do the the direct runoff for t equal to 5 and 9 so that's again simple math so let me color this and then we will end this video and I think at the beginning of the video I maybe I made a mistake when I said that this method assumes the base flow stops at inflection point it does not actually stop at inflection point we we use the inflection point to get the point B okay so if I don't remember whether I said that if I did that was a mistake so so that's our direct runoff and this is how our hydrograph looks after separating the base flow in yellow and the direct the total direct or the direct runoff is in green in the next assignment we will see how to actually calculate the volume of direct runoff and base flow in this assignment we just got the values in CFS for base flow and direct runoff at different timestamps in the next assignment we'll actually calculate the volume so we can see how much of the total flow got split into base flow and direct runoff so with this i will stop this video and by now you know how to separate base flow using straight line method using fixed base method and using the variable slope method i hope you understood all the calculations i did if not feel free to email me and i'll be happy to answer your questions so i'll see you in the next video thanks bye